For those who are not currently aware of our existence, we represent the organization known as the SCP Foundation. Our previous mission centered around the containment and study of anomalous objects, entities, and other assorted phenomena. This mission was the focus of our organization for more than 100 years. Due to circumstances outside our control, this directive has now changed. Our new mission will be the extermination of the human race. There will be no further communications. Well, that's only partially true, isn't it? Today, I'm going to tell you how you're wrong about human life. See, the thing is, the O5 Council said they weren't going to tell you anything else. I'm not part of the O5 Council, so I can say whatever I want, and hey, I've got an audience, so I might as well use it to explain a few things and perhaps help make the Foundation's efforts more effective. And you might be asking yourself, how could this possibly make things more effective? Well, I'm going to give you a story. When I was in seventh grade, so old enough to know that I'm a guy and crying is a bad idea, because that's how gender norms are. We treat ourselves terribly. Thanks a lot, humanity. The thing is, I'm sitting in the vice principal's office after doing something stupid, something simple, like saying something that was true but impolite to a teacher. And I'm sitting there, waiting for a paddling. Our school had a uh, paddle called Big Bertha. And in America, in Alabama especially, at the time, getting hit on the ass was a punishment you could actually get for doing something wrong in school. And that went away after someone sued. But the important part was, I mean, your teacher would know the vice principal would know, the school would know that you did something wrong, but your parents didn't have to know because there was no signage for it. But if you were suspended, you would explain why you were, had to stay home that day. Or if you were in school detention, not, not, not in school, but after school detention, you had to explain why they had to come pick you up later in the day. So, I'm sitting there. Like, I've been sitting there for, oh gosh, dozens, literally dozens of times at least in the last, you know, four or five years before that, waiting for the vice principal to go find a witness, because they had to have a witness for legal reasons, to make sure that he wasn't, beat, like, beating, beating me. And this time, it took the man, like, 30 minutes to find a witness. And I'm sitting there, and this is something I've experienced before, and it hurts. It hurts so much. But it's momentary. You know it's going to go away. And for some reason, while I'm sitting there, I just start crying. And it wasn't the punishment itself, because that I had experienced, as I said, dozens of times before. It was the waiting. It was knowing that it was coming and not being able to do anything about it. That caused an unimaginable amount of suffering. And the truth is, even though the O5 Council wants to just say, we're going to kill you all, and that's the end of it, I think, and I think they think it too, they just, they're trying to be somewhat more noble than they need to be, I think we need to suffer. So I'm going to explain to you why every human needs to die. So think back over the last few years or think back over the last few hundred years, and you'll realize, no matter how far back you go, things have always been trending in a downward direction. And humanity is just getting better and better at being bastards to each other. And at some point, we're going to become so good at being bastards to each other that we're going to throw enough people off of this rock that they're going to go into the rest of the universe and be bastards to everyone and everything they meet. There's a number of futurists who like to say that the experience of humanity and life in general is the universe observing itself. And we look at the universe, 
and we see that it's beautiful. And then we look at ourselves. And I mean, to say it's the opposite would be underselling. Humanity is a deep, dark hole from which it seems there may be no escape. And that's why we're doing what we're doing right now. <sighs> Think about it like this. There are certainly good people in this world. People who are kind, without any expectation of reward, without any pretense of loyalty or family, where they only do it because, you know what, they feel a duty. Good people who do good things for other people, who want to see the world better. The problem is, is that those people are so rare that they almost don't exist. Statistically, they really don't. Sure, one out of two million people might be that pure good person, but you've got two million people to counterbalance. It's not worth it. That's our thing, as humanity. We think it's worth it. That's the whole problem with uh, the human experience. We think of humans as these sacred, undefilable things, right? So much potential. And it's true, we do have potential. Potential for terrible destruction. Potential for abuse of each other of the earth, of eventually the rest of the universe. The universe is not supposed to be alive. We are not supposed to feel pain, to know our failings as a species are irrefutable and to be able to do nothing about it. Because those few points of light, those few good people. So? They're not going to solve the problem. They can't. There's no way they will ever do it. Look up into the sky and you will see an infinity of darkness. And if you're lucky, you don't live in a place where humanity has polluted the sky with light. With street lamps and cars and skyscrapers. If you look up, you'll see... Stars, these beautiful, bright lights. And we get caught up in that. Same as we do with humans, the good ones. We get caught up in the bright lights and we say to ourselves, that is beauty. That is beauty. But it's not. Because all that infinite darkness is only defined by its opposition to the light. And if we snuff out the lights, there is no more darkness. There is just the sky. And so, humanity deserves to die. And we're going to do it. And if you think you can escape, you're wrong. It's inevitable. It is coming for you. We are coming for you. The end is coming for you. And if at the end, well, you lie there screaming, crying, worried about what's in the next room, when they're going to come back, remember this. When you're gone, when we're all gone, the universe will be a peaceful, beautiful place that exists free of our own disgusting habits, free of humans. Don't ask yourself why. The why is unimportant really. 
it was inevitable that it would come to this. It's inevitable that we're coming. If anyone is still out there, for the time that you have, scroll down and hit the subscribe button. Then hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos, at least until we come for you. Then check out my merch store. If you're gonna die, at least you can die stylishly. Or maybe you'd like a mug to drink some coffee while you wait for the end. And of course, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian if you agree with me. Help support the extermination of the human race. I wish I was alone out here. And I'll see you all again on Tuesday. Or at least most of you.